Welcome to the Get Real Podcast, your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success with your host, Ron Phillips, because somebody's got to tell it like it is. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. Ron Phillips and Heather Marchant here. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Mm. <laughs> New year. New year. That's right. I, I literally cannot believe that the year is over. I mean, I, I can't believe it. The, the year, the year went so fast. I mean, yeah, it always goes by so fast yet so slow at the same time, if that's possible. But yeah. I used to hear my parents say that, man, time goes so fast. And I was like, whatever time is slow. <laughs> and now I feel like an old fart because I am saying the exact <laughs> same thing. Like it is time is moving so fast. <laughs> Just, just slow down yeah. for a second. I, you know, I can't keep up. Yeah. But here we are. You know, here we are. Year is behind us. New one is, uh, new one is here. And, um, is your youngest graduating from high school? Mm-hmm. What? I just realized that when yeah, you said serious, that. serious old man right here. Wow. Uh-huh. That's crazy. He was like a, almost a toddler when I first met him. That's crazy. I, uh, yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so there you go, people. Uh, Ron and Heather reminisce. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Is that, is that the name of the, the name of this segment? No, time out. People. We have we have actual cool things to talk about today. Well, one of them is not so cool, but we have some cool things to talk about. One of them is not so cool, but the other. Well, I, th- I think it's taking the not so cool stuff and seeing how you can flip it on its head for yourself. You know, so if you read the news and know what's going on. Um, Ron shot me an article this week and he does that occasionally and says podcast. (laughs) I think it was the only thing, (laughs) an article and podcast. So the article was about crime statistics being removed from realtor.com, right, Ron? Yeah, and Redfin. And Redfin, okay. Yeah, which, I mean, this has got to be the dumbest thing. Well, in in a little bit. I mean, it's not the dumbest thing because there have been some really stupid things this year, but this is really, really dumb, you know? Yeah. So this is why they're, they're taking the crime sets out. The real estate companies have removed the data due to growing concerns that it could perpetuate racial inequity. Now, I, the way, here, here's the way I look at this. I'm not sure what's, I, I don't know what's more racist. I know. Stating that, stating that there is crime in a say. specific area or that crime is racist. Remove crime stats because the crime stats are only for a specific race. Yeah. Which has got to be the most racist thing you can say. Mm hmm. Well, I think what's interesting is the quote says, we are reassessing what safety means to buyers and renters. No, actually, we're not. You can reassess it all you want. But here's what I guarantee. Everybody who's looking to buy a house to live in for themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, I would just I would just want to remind everybody that we do the same thing when we're buying rental properties, right? Yep. Doesn't want to live in a place where you get shot. Yeah. Right? Walking down the street or to go get your mail. <laughs> shot, raped, yeah. ripped off. I, I mean, name your crime. I, I don't know anyone. So you, you, can't, just, you can't just reassess yeah. what, what, what crime is. That's complete and utter PR BS. And this is a, this is a train wreck. So... Realtor.com is going to remove it from their site. And what do they think? That's going to make any difference at all. People are just going to go to neighborhoodscout.com. Mm-hmm. And, I, and so if you're listening, just go to neighborhoodscout.com. Yeah. They, have the, they have the crime stats. Because yeah. everybody looks at crime stats before they buy somewhere to live. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Crime is not racist. There, there's crime in every single race. There's crime all over the place. Mm-hmm. There just happens to be less crime in certain areas, and that has zero to do with your race. It has everything to do with who you are as a person. 
So if you're a criminal and you kill people, I don't want to live next to you. And if you sell drugs, um, I don't want to live next to you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hard stop. Regardless of what you look like. I, I think it's crazy that they are determining that this, it's one of the only measurables of safety. I mean, how do you measure if I walk down the street, do I feel safe? What is a way that you can measure the degree of safety? And this is one of the only ways and going and looking at the neighborhood, you know, if the yards are well kept, I mean, even still, that's really a, not a great measure. So, so, you so wanna, the stats are, that's so You want to hear just how stupid this is. This is the spokesperson. Okay. Trying to explain this nonsense, because I think even sometimes the spokespeople know this is nonsense. And they yeah. try really hard to spin it. This is, this, is, this is what this person says. The fact that most crimes are missing uh, creates a real possibility that crimes show up in the data set and skew one way or another. Okay, So because somebody may have not reported a crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it gets better. It gets better. <laughs> and the fact that most reported favorite. crimes go unsolved means that some of the crimes being reported, in fact, may not be crimes. So if, if Aunt Betty gets murdered, but they can't find the murderer, probably be Aunt crime. Betty didn't get murdered and she's <laughs> still alive. It's like, a, it's like a dog chasing its tail. That sentence I mean, makes no and, sense. And that sentence right there, that whole yeah. sentence where they're trying to... Now, Nowhere in any of their explanation of this does race come up, except for in the first part of this. We're doing this because of race, which is a big, hot, steaming pile of crap. They try to explain it, and it doesn't have anything to do with race. So just leave that out of it because that has nothing to do with it. Yep. It's either a crime ridden area. I'm sorry, but I grew up in a place where the trailer parks is, is where the meth heads were, right? Yeah. And guess what? They were all white people. Yeah. And guess what? I don't want to live next to them. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what race you are. If you're a criminal, I don't want to live next to you. And these crime stats are important and people are still going to go get them. So Realtor.com and Redfin, they make themselves less relevant to the people who they're trying to uh, support. And, and, and there you have it. Yeah. So 2021 ends with Redfin and Realtor.com being idiots. So NeighborhoodScout.com, Ron? NeighborhoodScout.com, everybody. Okay. So then you just move <laughs> over there. Yeah, um, give them your business, no problem. I don't know if Zillow, um, I mean, Zillow made their mistakes, right? Um, but their mistakes were actually mistakes trying to, to, to do business and help people out. This mistake is just stupid. This is just stupidity. Yeah, I agree. Trying really hard to play to some kind of a of, of a ridiculous base that that still cares. And and here's the secret: the people that they're trying to placate, all of them look at the crime statistics before they buy a house. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. true. Um, I think the other piece of news that came out that is really interesting: um, a lot of news outlets are saying that interest rates are on the rise in 2022. Which, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. I know. That said, we have said this before, and then they didn't. They went down. True. I, I just, they can't continue to do that forever. And since they're openly saying this now, that they plan to raise rates, um, I think it's kind of baked in. Yeah. I just don't think they're going to go crazy. But who knows? Um, I mean, just with inflation, man. I mean, goodness gracious. I just had a conversation with my parents. I uh, went down to visit them a couple weeks ago, I guess. And um, just had a conversation with them about uh, interest rates in the 80s. Mm. And then I, I told them, you know, we get so caught up in the, in the here and now that we forget the very recent past. Mm-hmm. My first house, and I, I just said that I was really old, but I, I'm not that old, right? So my first house, our interest rate was eight and a quarter percent. And when I told my parents 
that we were getting an eight and a quarter percent interest rate, they flipped. <laughs> they couldn't believe that they were that low. Couldn't believe it. And then it wasn't very many years later. And Heather, you remember this. We were selling rental properties in mm-hmm. 06, 07, uh, 08. Yeah. And the interest rates were in the sixes, yeah. low sixes. And no one could believe they were that low. Yeah. I mean, no one could believe it. And that, I mean, the, the, the very few times we got a sub six rate, I mean, people were partying. Yeah. And this was True. not that many years ago, people. It's not that many years ago. We have had such a long run now with absurd interest rates, they're bound to go up. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, last week we talked about the build to rent model and getting in on interest rates fixed, you know, <laughs> when you're buying something that's a year out from being completed. Yep. That's the, those are the kind of strategies to employ when you know interest rates are going to go up. Man. Invest your capital. Lock in 30-year money. Lock mm-hmm. in 30 year money, lock in 30 year money. All day long. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So this, this leads me into a couple of questions I wanted to talk to you about today. So we take the current market conditions, we take what, you know, projections and, you know, things that are happening in the market and we look forward to 2022. And I feel like you're masterful at this, Ron, of being able to kind of have good mm-hmm. vision. Ron, in our company, he's called the visionary, actually. So <laughs> the visionary is able to forecast and create kind of it's almost like imaginative creativity in creating a vision for the company, a vision for your family, a vision for very specific areas of your life. And I know in years past, you've basically said, and you told me this on Monday, I believe, like, peace out, Heather, like I'm, I'm out. So we're recording these podcasts back to back so that Ron can take a solid break to be in that space. So I wanted to talk about and ask you questions about that. Cause for you, I think that comes pretty naturally. It does not come naturally for me. I, I execute vision is what <laughs> is what I love yeah. to do. So. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 uh, that is my, that is one of my superpowers is, is to be able to see things, but, um, you do have to kind of check out to make that happen. And I do that every year and it's really difficult because December, as you know, Heather, it's, mm-hmm. it's one of the busiest months for us because everyone is trying mm-hmm. to get everything closed before the end of the year. Everybody's still trying to buy stuff. Um, and it, it is, it's one of our busiest and most profitable months of the year for, for that reason. And so we're trying to get all of this business done at the same time. I I have to check out for at least a week, but I try to check out for the last couple of weeks. Sometimes it's more difficult based on how Christmas falls, but um, like this year, Christmas falling on Saturday doesn't help. That doesn't help. (laughs) Usually it's a, you know, midweek or something like that. And everybody just takes off a whole week and, you know, but, but anyway. um, Are you sitting down with your wife? Or are you by yourself? Yes, some of it um, I do. And some of it I do by myself. Is it pretty casual with your wife? Is it like, let's go out to dinner and chat about this? Or is it like, okay, we're going to sit down and talk about this? Um, Bobby Joe and I don't need any reason to go out to dinner. We do that all the time. And lunch. um, I know, but is it like an agenda item, Ron? (laughs) Work with me here, man. Jeez. (laughs) Um, No. No, super casual. Um, Super casual. And you know, my, the, my process by myself is pretty casual too. Really, really all I'm trying to do is determine what it is that I want my life to look like for the next year. Okay. And then, you know, what do I want the business to look like for the next year? And what does the business need to look like for the next year? Because things are going to change. Yeah. I mean, we already have, we have already been talking about some of the things that are changing in the, into the next year mm-hmm. and we have to plan for those eventualities and you have to see them coming. And sometimes you have to slow down and stop and, and unplug from your business so that you can actually see those things coming. Okay. So how does that take two weeks? I'm not trying to sound insulting. I just mean, to me, that's like a 30 minute brainstorm. Okay. No, it it doesn't, but unplugging does. Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that it would probably take you quite a while to unplug Heather. What? If you actually fully unplugged. Yeah. How long would it take you to actually get out of, of work enough that you 
didn't have to think about it. And you were thinking about yeah. what do I want my life to look like next year? I would have to get a to-do list done so that I can shut off my brain. My brain does not shut off very well. So, yeah. I mean, it is my superpower, but to my detriment sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I think everybody, everybody needs that. And this whole, you know, go, go, go work your face off. Uh, I can, I can outwork everybody else. Um, you know, that's, that's great. But sometimes when you do that, you step over dollar bills to pick up nickels. Yeah. Agreed. Unfortunately. Agreed. So do you have, um, like, do you journal or these are genuine questions I've had. So no, no journaling. I, I don't journal. You whiteboard. I do. Okay. So I'm a very, um, I'm a, Tactile. well, I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> choose to say, I visual. have to have pictures. I have to have pictures, right? So I draw yeah. on the whiteboard and I draw things out. Um, I'm a very visual person. So, um, I, that's why I love the whiteboard. Yeah. And In some people office, aren't, you know, some people office. are list people and some people, yeah. um, but I'm very visual. And so I draw pictures. And I know you bought Heather has seen some yes. of my big, huge picture drawings. And, yeah. you know, I think more than anything, they, they, uh, people get scared. They come to my office and there's a big, huge picture and they're like, Oh crap. What does this mean? Yeah. yeah. Vaughn has big ideas with those pictures usually. Um, although it's a lot of, you do write lists and stuff, but you diagram a lot. I would say, I know yes. you like mind map. Um, yes, that is that things have to flow for me. I have to understand yeah. how everything flows. What's the software that you, is it mind map? This, the website, yeah, my mind, mind, meister, mind, mind meister. That's yeah. right. And that then works. you bought a vibe board. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like a digital whiteboard. You draw on it and it Jeez. turns into digital. Amazing. Yeah. Everyone it is really cool. And you can share it. Like I, you've sent me and we've yep. kind of diagrammed stuff out together ver remotely, which is cool. Um, and then what kind of questions do you ask yourself? I guess when you say, what do I want my life to look like? Are you talking about, like, I know, I know you well enough to know some of the things like your family time and how to balance all of it. Cause we're up to a lot right now and we're super excited about stuff that we're working on and how to temper that, I guess, with the time you want to spend with your family. Yeah. So I, I plan the, the only way to make this happen that I've found is to plan all of that first and then make business fit hmm. and everybody else doesn't do that. So most people in their year in their business and they high five themselves or they cry or whatever it's going to happen. And then they turn off what happened in the past and they start looking forward to what's going to happen next year. And they make a plan for all of that stuff. And, you know, most of the people that we hang around, Heather, they make big plans. I mean, that's, yeah. there's, a, they have big visions, big goals. And I'm a hundred percent believe in that. Right. So I set massive, some people would say ridiculous goals. And when I do that, I also set all of the, the structure to make sure that that works, you know, all of the people that I need in place to be able to do that. What, and we, you know, we just, we just had a planning meeting today and we were trying to figure out all of this stuff. And one of the things is how many people do we need? How many people is this going to take? Yeah. How much is this going to cost? Really? How long is this going to take us? You know, and then we plan it out during the, the, you know, throughout the year. And then each quarter takes a chunk of that. But most people do all of that planning. And then after they get done with this massive, huge, you know, BHAG, big hairy audacious goal they <laughs> they just completely forget that they have a personal life and a family and you know maybe they want to be um maybe they want to work on their spirituality this year and maybe they have a couple of um, hobbies that they want to work on and maybe they want to travel and <clears throat> you know if you plan all the other crap first that's great you probably hit those goals and in the meantime you will completely isolate yourself from your family, from your friends, from anything you wanted to accomplish personally, and you will probably be miserable, but you'll hit your goal, which is fantastic. Yeah. So good point. to answer your question, I do all of the personal stuff first, and then I wrap around it and I, and I, and I ask myself, okay, can I, can I actually do this big, huge thing that I want to do next year? 
with the time that I have left over after I plan my, my personal life? Hmm. If the answer is no, then that means I, then I, that means I probably need help. Like I need more people or yes. something. There's always a way to make it happen. I just have to be creative about trying to figure out how to make it happen and how to still maintain life. So when you say you plan your family life, this is really good. Sorry. But when you say you plan your family and your personal life, what does that look like? Are you putting in like family vacations or are you getting down to nitty gritty? So this may make you really uncomfortable. I'm like hammering. I am. I am. Yeah. This is, so we didn't plan this. She's just peppering me with questions. <laughs> questions like I said. Um, I, I am, I am not a planner. So we will, we will try to just put out there, like, what, what do we really want to, what are the couple of really big trips we want to do? Mm -hmm. We're planning vacations, for instance, Can Bobby Joe, and I'll just say, well, we want to go to, you know, Ireland and we want to go to where we're not going anywhere in Europe this year. Cause they're all stupid over there. <laughs> but you know, generally we would, we would probably go see, we would probably go to Italy and we'd probably go, you know, somewhere else over mm -hmm. in Europe. And those two big trips we would plan and we would actually plan them on the calendar. Mm -hmm. And in the past, when we didn't have a whole lot of money, we would pay for them as well. Really? Because then you're going, they're locked in. Yeah. Yeah. If you plan them on the calendar, but you don't actually buy tickets or anything like that, then the, the date comes up and, you know, and money's tight, you're probably not going. Yeah. But now that that's not the case, we, we, we don't do that. We just plan them whenever we want, but we do put them on the calendar because if you don't, um, you probably won't go year will be over mm -hmm. and then you won't go. But Bobby Joe and I, and the kids are pretty spontaneous. So I plan in an, I plan in enough flexibility that we can, that we can literally just go whenever we want to go somewhere. And you know that because I'll just say, Hey, I'm going to be gone next week. And I'm That's true. You do. Yeah. You're not afraid of buying. One thing I've noticed about you that I think is something I keep trying to do is you're not afraid of paying for plane tickets when they're a little more expensive to make it happen in your spontaneity. And I, that is like a mental block for me. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't. I, I have to go when the tickets are cheap and everything's yeah, it's a, it's a work in progress over here. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you do, you do, you do what you got to do. I mean, we, there was many times when we, you know, we, that's not how we were. We were, we have the ability to be able to do that now. Yes. So we do. Yeah. Um, but we've always been really like spon spontaneous. Uh, we well, don't plan very well. Now that's not true. Bobby Joe, I think he's probably learned how to be more spontaneous with me because I'm just crazy. Um, but she is, she, she just goes right along with it. And mm -hmm. we have a blast being spontaneous like that. Yeah. Um, she's way more of a planner than I am, but I'm, but I, I don't need a plan at all. She needs a little bit of one, but not much. Yeah. Well, I think I say that to say that um, I, in one course I attended, it was like a workshop type of thing years ago. Um, in this capacity though, at this company, um, they said, what is your definition of financial freedom? And I had to really like a specific thing. And it was that, that I would be able to go on a trip, not nickel and dime and budget and all that stuff, but just be able to just enjoy myself. Cause typically that's, um, Doug and I both are savers. And so that's really weird for us to pay full price or, you know, those kind of things. So that's why I bring it up because, um, it's like that abundance mindset, that kind of thing. That's all. So, um, okay. And then your execution of your, once you have that all planned out, you typically are coming back and you usually you're telling me like, Hey, this is on my calendar. I'm doing these things with my family. Um, and we work around them. We schedule things around your family time. So you integrate our team really well in making sure that you carry out your vision. Yeah. I think for the most time, most part, um, when I first started doing things like that, when I would like, I got back from a, a meeting, some guy was like, yeah, I just, uh, I take Fridays off. And I was like, what? We just take Friday off. How do you do that? And he goes, yeah. well, it's crazy. I just, um, I just take it off. Do it. And I was like, but what does that mean? Like, how do you do that? And, um, he goes, look, if you just explain to people what your life is, people will operate around you. 
And it's the craziest thing. Some people get irritated at how I do things. Um, I, I, I admit that some people do. But for instance, my cell phone basically says, I don't want to talk to you in a nicer way than that, but pretty much like, I don't want to talk to you. So if I don't answer the phone, then people are left to either call the number that I've left on there to talk to somebody else, or I guess just don't talk to me, you know, try to call somebody else. And some people would say that's a horrible way to do business. Yeah. And you know what, if I were trying to get a hold of me, I would probably feel the same way, but I don't really care. Yeah. Because if I don't do that, I literally can't get anything done mm -hmm. because I have so many people who have my number. I, I can't do business that way. And so that's what my message says. In addition to that, I, I, for the most part, shut my day off at a certain time. And then I don't respond to people after that, yeah. if it's work related. And once you tell people that that's the way things are, people move their life to meet your life. And that's what I mean by planning how I want my year to look because every year I may want my life to look a little bit different. I mean, Bobby, Joe and I had the very clear conversation about the, you know, new, new st st quote startup that we're doing this year. It's going to take a little bit more of my time than I'm used to spending. Yeah. And we made a conscious choice to be, to do that. And so that means other, other places in my life have to give. So if you, if you plan some big, huge thing, like for instance, I, I had a buddy who, who, who said, you know, I, I want to do a triathlon next year. Okay. Well, just understand what that means mm -hmm. going into next year, because yeah, you, you know, if you actually look at what the training is involved in that, you're going to, you wow. have to give up other things. So you just have to figure out what those things are. And you just have to, everyone in your life has to be okay with, with giving that stuff up because a triathlon is going to eat your life, mm -hmm. right? So you can make that goal. That's great. And I will applaud you the whole way before you make it though. I'll just ask you if you're okay, giving up whatever it is that you have to give up Yeah, because that is hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. So Yeah. I just, I plan all that stuff first and then I, and then I wrap my business around it. And if I need other people, I go out and find out who the best people are who can help me with whatever this other stuff is. And mm -hmm. I plug them in and Heather, you've seen that uh, a, a million yeah. times. Yeah. The book, who, not how, I know we've talked about it on, on the show before, but who, not how is all I keep hearing and what you're saying, right? If you have this goal and you want to make it happen and instead of trying to think of ways that you have to give up everything for the goal, which sometimes you do have to shift. I think you're right. But um, also looking to see what, who you can have help with those things. And Ron yeah, I mean, has helped me with that. There's some things like a triathlon. It's you. Yeah. There's, yep. you, there's can no yeah. you can get a coach. You can get a coach, but you have to literally yes. put in the work and you have yeah. to put in the time. There's other parts of your life that it doesn't have to be you. You, you a yeah. lot of people choose that it is them, but that's a choice that they're making. It's it's not the actuality, you know. When I did my bodybuilding competition years ago, I did hire a coach, but I saw the coach once a week. Everything else I had to do. Yeah. yeah. That's true. I mean, my wife cooked a crap load of meals. I mean, <laughs> so let's, just, let's give credit where credit's due. I I had to do a lot of work but I also had to have support systems in place and, and everyone in the company knew that for like three hours a day, I just was not going to be available. It was like the triathlon thing. You just have to understand that going into the year, mm -hmm. but there's a whole bunch of other things in your life that don't have to be that way, that you can get other people to help you. You may have yeah. to give up a little bit of something to have that happen, but it's better to have a whole bunch of people and a whole bunch of things going on, all of which from a business perspective are paying you than to have one thing that only you control mm -hmm. and only you can do because then you're stuck. Yeah, exactly. Totally agree. And it's, it's been a game changer for me mentally because my brain doesn't work that way naturally. And, um, I've really worked on that over the last, I would say two years, um, the who, not how idea but I've been more focused on it this year than I think I ever have. So 
Very cool. Um, I think I think those are the majority of my questions. I think that taking the time to plan out your year, I think is so much bigger than New Year's resolutions. I think that gets the big, you know, attention, but Look, focusing I, I, on the whole I, thing. I don't, I, I generally don't like Grant Cardone, but there's a few things that I do like about what he has taught. And that is, um, I've always been a huge believer in making enormous goals mm. because I, I do agree with him that your goal has to be the payoff from your goal has to be big enough that you want to go get it. Yeah. Because otherwise, what's the point if your goal is you know, I'm going to get out of bed in the morning every day this year. I mean, who cares? Like, who <laughs> cares about your stupid little goal? Like, set something big that really stretches you. And then if you come up short, you just beat everybody else. And yeah. you killed your, your goals. Even if you come up short, you still did so much more than you would have done. So in that one thing... He's got a massive point. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that he says is that people underestimate what needs to be done and they overestimate their ability to do it. Mm -hmm. And so as you're planning and as you're thinking through what you want to do for the year, understand you will probably underestimate your ability and you are uh, what it will take and you'll overestimate your ability. So plan for when you do that. You got to yeah. plan for the eventuality that, that things aren't going to work out like you want. And I'll give you a, a perfect example. Like this year, you know, I had huge goals for lifting weights. I mean, I, yeah. I had big, big goals. Well, I got hurt and <laughs> I went in to see my coach and, and she was like, so what happens if you don't hit your goals? And I'm like, look, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get well, I'm going to get healed up and then we're going to go attack them again. And, you know, at the time I had already surpassed where I would have in any other year where I would have thought that I would have gotten. That's true. You were excellent. I thought for sure you'd hit your goal, like and, no problem. <laughs> and I, I think in her mind as well, she was like, this is insane. Like nobody Nobody generally that comes here and sees me, you know, has this much of a gain in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But like I did everything. My food was dialed in. I, 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 I killed it and I just killed it in the gym every day. And I did everything I was supposed to do. And it was working. Yeah. And then I got hurt. So am I going to hit my goal? No, I'm not. But what I did was so much more than I would have done anyway that I'm feeling pretty accomplished for the year. Yeah. And had I not gotten hurt, I absolutely would have hit them. No question. <sighs> so, I mean, stuff like that is going to happen to you and it's going to happen to you in business. And Heather, we've seen that on, you know, yeah. so many times business just smacks you in the face. And then you have to, you have to figure out how to fight back and yeah. just keep moving. And so when you're planning, when I'm planning at the end of the year, I'm trying to plan through all of that stuff. Like what is going to happen if this happens over here? And I'm, and I'm trying to see, you know, where the market is shifting and, you know, how I can, how I can impact the market. What do my clients really, really want? What do they need? And how can I get that to them? Right. Um, it's a fun time of year for me. I really enjoy it because yeah. as you said, I know you do. I mean, that's my jam. I, I enjoy it. And so I get to take a couple of weeks off and do what I really love to do and plan out my, my personal life and my family life as well. Yeah, I think it's, I think it is a really good, even though it's not my superpower, it's one of those things as I mean, my whole life, if there's something I'm not very good at naturally, I fight, man, <laughs> I will, I'll figure it out and kind of make it a skill. So I'm determined to do that this, this year before the year ends is my goal to really have a clear vision and focus, which is and if, exciting. If you're not naturally that way and you're, you're more of an execution type of a person, mm -hmm. when you sit down to do this, you have to take, you have to take the little, the little person that tells you all of the things 
wrong and all of the things that you have to do to be able to get whatever you're dreaming about is you have to turn them off. True. You cannot listen to that side while you're dreaming. You have to actually dream. So when I make my goals, this is easy for me. It's the execution piece, Heather, as you know, that's so hard for me to do, right? I can Except dream. For working out the gym, no problem. Yeah, no problem. I, I <laughs> yeah, I do enjoy that. Um, but like I, 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 and I can execute a whole bunch of other things. I think my problem is that there's, there's so much, I can't do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I have to have other people come help do these big, huge things. But if I sat down every year and I went through the things that I wanted to do and everything that I said I wanted to do, I was like, oh yeah, but I can't do that because of this over here and this over here. And then I'd have to do this. I, there would never be a plan. There would never be a thing to plan because That's I would true. have shut myself down and not allowed myself to actually see what the customers want and how I can get it to them and what do they need that they don't even know they need? Like, mm -hmm. how, how do I get that stuff to them? All of that comes from shutting off the engineer that's going to tell me how to do it later. I don't need that guy right now. I, I need the person who's, who, who can dream all of this stuff up. And when I plan my life out and I say, I'm going to go on these two big, huge trips. I'm going to go on, you know, several other minor trips and I'm going to work out for two hours in the morning with nobody bothering me. And I'm going to stop working at five and I'm not going to work on the weekends and I'm not going to do any work on Sundays. When you, when you start chopping all that stuff out of your calendar, the engineer comes in and goes, can't do that. Yeah. There's not enough time left. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't need to listen to that guy right now. What I need to do is say how I want my life to look this year and then go, okay, cool. Now I can invite the engineer back, but when I invite him back, I say, this is what we're doing. I need you to help me figure out how we're going to do it. Yeah. It's kind of like the conversations that I have with my attorney. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not asking you if I can do this. I'm asking <laughs> you, how can I do this legally? Yeah. That's what I'm asking you. And sometimes they still tell me I can't do it, but, but at least <laughs> that's the conversation we have. Right. Yeah. So that's anyway, awesome. hopefully that's helpful. I, I think everyone should do this. And if you can't do it for a week, like take a day. Yeah. And plan, plan your life out the way that you want it. Very cool. Very applicable, I think, to everyone. And like I said at the beginning, this is your superpower. So it's something that you're really good at. So um, thanks for being a little bit vulnerable and letting me pepper you with questions. <laughs> it's, it's, my, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. <laughs> and it's a new year. So everybody get out there. You know, we're going we're gonna to tell you every single week to get out there and make something happen. But this year... It's the year for you to make something happen. It really is. And that something resides in this planning session. So if there's one thing that you're supposed to get done this week, it is your planning session. So make get it out there, get out there, make it happen. This has been the Get Real Podcast. To subscribe and for more information, including a list of all episodes, go to getrealestatesuccess.com.